been here for a couple of days now and and just in Oakland from from Maryland Southern Maryland that is I've resided for the past three years now and so the past three years um, of course when I moved in it was like a couple months before the pandemic and I was already you know planning for next year uh, 2020 to do like scratch pad and, and, and things of that nature DJing wise so of course um, February hit I was plan um, planning the you know the event as far as scratch pad and now all that had to go you know go yeah you know, I had to table all that so pandemic hit and uh, job wise I, it was all hands on deck for my uh, nature of my work which deals with um, government stuff so throughout the pandemic my group was all was was coming in while most of the uh, people where I work at were teleworking so I throughout that whole ordeal I got sick once um, I had to go go travel um, somewhere else in the country to take care of stuff, and I just took the risk um, because of, uh, because I'm so passionate about my job, and went down there and took care of business, got back, and started having symptoms of COVID, and I was quarantined for, for two weeks. So throughout this whole time, um, um, that that year, in order to keep my DJ skills up, I um, Knowing, knowing that I won't won't be able to practice like every day, um, I subscribe to the Beat Junkies Institute of Sound School online school and like practice like twice a week. Um, Consistent. Yes. So I like tend mostly I tend like a D Styles class. At the time it was tw when it first started out his his class was two times a week and then it went down to um, Sundays. Because the weekends are the time, the only time I really had um, time to really um, to myself and take care of things around the house. So attended those classes and built my skills all up. And at the same time, as far as DJing is concerned, there was times I just made a couple of tracks just for fun, to, again to keep the skills up. So a um, couple months later. Um, <laughs> My former boss basically did some things that he shouldn't have done, said some things that was racially motivated. Fast forward, I got his position. I took over his position. And so it was my first time being in a man managerial position um, at my job. And that was the time I was basically contractor. So did all that, dealt with all the stress. And again, my go-to as far as stress reliever is music. It's been ever since I've started this thing. Um, it's been 20, 22, 20, 22 years now I've been DJing. And um, and just like I said, just the music, practicing when I got home from working long hours like I used to do in the Air Force. <laughs> Stress reliever, did all that. So fast forward up to, what was it, this past spring. I got offered a position at the same job, and it's more, <clears throat> excuse me, more of a managerial type of job um, position. Um, and a lot of people in the group look at look look towards me for trying to correct the problems um, around the, the workplace. And at times, um, again, I went came home, practice, and also. At times, I a couple times I met up with Jam Burglar. Um, he's pretty much the same boat as I am. He he works a very you know very stressful job. He comes home, he does the same pretty much thing. He does he does the DJing thing as because he loves it so much. He's been doing it for for over 20, 20 some odd years as well. And we we recently got together um, and uh, we we do this challenge where we basically take. Uh, like a scratch record and just basically use those samples on there and just try to make a song just utilizing that that one one particular record so we recently did that with um, public safety warning 
this is the name of the song we came, we, we called it, and it's after um, the record uh, EP that um, D Styles and Widowmaker made called Fair Fair Warning. Um, it's an EP, and basically that that record. Um, I think the story is that Widowmaker are, are beat producers from Oregon, and they hooked up with D, and D was like, "Hey, just give me all the stems and." We, uh, see what I can see what I can do with that, and that's what how that that record came out. If you if you notice when you listen to it, a lot of it's like scratched scratch beats and scratch horns and things of that nature. So on the B side of that record, uh, when I met up with Jamber, I was like, hey, let's do let's let's do something with Fair Warning, and we just basically uh, spent eight hours at his house <laughs> and 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 just grind it all out. And yeah, I think the hardest the hardest part when we make these songs. This is our second song, by the way. The first one was um, uh, one called uh, whatever you whatever you call it or whatever you want to call it on tones. The tones of a record that um, Christian Jerstad uh, made a couple of years ago or a year or two ago. But anyway, back to um, public safety warning. So basically, trapped ourselves in the basement and just just pretty much just recorded stuff on his his cool edit program yeah he still uses cool edit pro <laughs> and, uh, i i wish i i wish i still had it. it's an old it, 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 it long as it works you know that's that's the thing with music um just stick with whatever you like if it works just keep using it don't you don't have to just because the newest thing comes out you don't have to uh go out and get it if, if whatever you're using works for you just stick with it as much as you can so uh, yeah, we banged that out and we recorded it and he basically gave me a rough cut of the um, of the finalized song and I just edited the video and I just basically, I was sitting there trying to think of a concept as far as um, the song or what as far as video because I like doing videos along to, to you know make it a theme and things of that nature so I didn't feel like filming and so I was like all right I'm just gonna go to you know some some sites like archive dot archive.org or whatever and just look for it it's like crime or you know robbery type related yeah, songs yeah. right so did all that that took me I think like four days to edit that because basically as soon as I got home from work I was like all excited to, to edit all that. One of the guys shot in the back of the head, what's that from? Uh, I can't recall the name of the the um, movie, I think it was like a, uh, a, a, a old English or British British movie because I was, when I was listening to it, there's snippets of it and it had, you know, um, British accent to it so it was a, some British movie. But um, yeah, I had fun. Um, if you all check out the um, that video, and um, yeah, check out the link that um, Billy posted for that for that video, and you will notice it's like a whole bunch of repetitive stuff with the the scratches and stuff like that. I really enjoyed it. I was like <laughs> snickering to it the whole time. <laughs> the guy like moving his arm back and forth and yeah, yeah. all that type of stuff. Yep. So. Yeah, and I mean that's that's pretty much it in a nutshell. In the you know in the past couple of years where I've been at and what's what's been going on, but I'm still I'm still you know doing I'm still involved with music in some form or fashion. This is not like the not as as much as I used to you know um, prior to the pandemic. Things like like most people in the world have gotten you know very 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 busy in their lives, and so. Just trying to do that work-life balance type of ordeal. So that's pretty much pretty much it.